Okay, so this is a temporary cage that uh, my friend knocked together for her quail. This is the quail, you know, tiny little birds, quite tasty. Um, but I just wanted to show uh, one of the issues, as you can see, they're birds. They crap a lot. And so the boards that are on the inside of the wire get covered in poop. Um, they have, uh, she's got a, a dish pan in here for a sandbox. Uh, they like to dust themselves off in the sand. And uh, the um, feed and the water, they get all over. You can see the, they're messy birds as far as eating. Um, no table manners at all. So, the the problems with the cage is basically with the wood on the inside. So, what we're going to do today is build a different kind of cage, much bigger, and um, to remedy that problem. So, let's get, get to it. Oh, YouTube! Well, a uh, little bit different kind of video today. <laughs> you may have guessed that I'm at a small farm, a homestead. Uh, a lot of people in the school community right now, I mean, I'm not saying it's a, it's a, it might be a minority in the schoolie community, but it's starting to become a majority of the friends I know that have been doing it for a long time. People are, uh, buying small plots of land here and there all over the country and setting up homesteads. Along the way, animals and other, you know, trying to farm out in the desert. Uh, and actually, I'm working on towards that. Um, you'll see more videos this winter as I look for land and slowly get going. Uh, uh, but anyway, the uh, what I'm doing here today is my friend, and uh, she's got the chickens, she's raising dog or doggies and rabbits, and but she also has quail. So today, uh, I'm going to build a a uh, quail cage for her uh, her breeders. So I think she's talking one male and five females. Because it goes back and forth. Between four and six females, you don't want them uh, too many. But uh, there's money in eggs, money in the actual quail meat. It's uh, tasty and um you can raise them up to slaughter uh after 10 or 12 weeks and breeding i think what was the the breeding was or they start to lay eggs after six to eight weeks, six to eight weeks. so her birds are getting to that point so we're going to uh i'm going to build a bigger uh, big cage. You'll see the one that she's got now. I talk about a little bit of the problems. You'll see that in a sec. And then uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna build a bigger one. So let's get to it. Booga, booga, booga. All right, so I, I pre-cut stuff. This one is gonna be eight feet long and Two feet wide. That's we've got wire. That's two feet wide. Um, it's two less cuts. Um, the thing is that I'm I'm using two by threes, which aren't really three inches, and they aren't really two. But um, some people make these things out of two by twos. I found it's really hard to find straight two by twos, so you end up with cages that are bowed or whatever. This is a little overkill, but the difference in price is not that much. Uh, if you're using two by twos, pre-drill and um, screw them together if you want to do that. Um, I'm not. 
because I got a new toy. Uh, what's nice with this is I just get it lined up. Quick and easy. Uh, nails actually hold better. You also notice I'm using three inch nails and I'm keeping my fingers more than three inches back. I've been bit before. So I got to do the same thing at the other end, but while we're here, this part is where there's going to be a sandbox. And you gave me a two foot one. Yeah, that one. So this is going to be the floor to the sandbox, like in the other one. Um, so I'm just going to put uh, this support. Oh, that kicked me in the gut. So, I'm going to do the same thing at the other end, and then, we, uh, then we'll get into the next step. Okay, so I got this all, it's the, the bottom braces done. Uh, the next step is we're going to put the bottom wire on. This is uh, half inch by half inch PVC coated hardware cloth. The reason you want to coat, get the coated stuff is that uh, there's a lot of ammonia and nasty stuff in bird poop that will eat the galvanized right up. Especially the PVC will protect it for at least for a while. So let me show you how we get that done. Okay, uh, and another reason to use this, the half inch by half inch, is that uh, when you get the tiny quail in here, the little hatchlings, when you first put them in the end of these for either uh, something like you can raise, grow it. what do you figure, like 40 or 50 in, in this if we have no center divider. Uh, we're doing it with center dividers that are removable, so they could be a breeding cage or however you want to do it. Um, little quail, not surprisingly, have little feet. Um, this, they don't tend to fall through it. Um, breaking toes, uh, you call it bumblefoot. Bumblefoot. Um, so we don't want that to happen. Um, now, attaching this wire, little air air stapler from Harbor Freight that I bought probably 25 years ago. Um, still works, and it does staples real nice. And we just go down through and staple this all the way down. I'm going to staple the end first. It's a little fun trying to balance this on the wire so that the foot catches. But it stays down real nice. What we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to staple it all the way down. We get to that end, then I'll cut it. It's a little easier. We can pull it tight. Uh, that way we got something to hang on to. So I'll just throw a little time lapse in here. Okay, so I got the, the wire down. Um, 
There will be a center support in there, but we found out that it's a little hard to uh, get a lot, some of what we got to do along the way. Now, sandbox at either end, I'm just taking and this piece, this is uh, 12 by 24. Um, and so the, the sandbox itself is a little smaller. It's like 21 inches by uh, 10 or so, 10 or 11. Um, quail don't own measuring tape, so I don't worry about it too much. And what I've been using is uh, these stainless steel drywall screws. Really hard plywood. It's stainless because uh, this is actually the only board that they will be, uh, they'll have sand in there, but they, we could have, you know, urine, although birds don't pee. It's all mixed in with their, their feces. So, a screen too, the, uh, there will be a door, go in every once in a while and sift it out. And uh, the idea is it's going to be a, a darker, safer place for them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do this. I'm going to do the same thing at the other end and then we're going to flip it over. Okay, so um, I've tried building these with the uh, build the top, set the top down on. Uh, that didn't work because things are just a little off. And the first one we made, I did these 12 high. This is actually the third one. So put that, that just leaves a little opening. So we decided to make them just a little taller by putting a uh, shim. two by shim down here and attaching this. There's gonna be so many other ways that this thing is attached. Can I have the screws? Yeah. Uh, shorter or longer. So many different ways this, these tops and bottoms are gonna be attached. And again, it's just quail. <laughs> We're not dealing with like Steve McQueen escaping from a, a prisoner of war camp. And they're not velociraptors, honestly. And they're not velociraptors, although they think they are. <laughs> so, I just get one started. shim out, move it over here, do the same thing all over again. I didn't know which side you wanted to use. No, I like to put one in to start. Because we'll be doing a hole somewhere. This is where being a little ambidextrous is nice. I can use both hands for doing this. Okay, so that's the basis of the sandbox. Uh, still gonna put some more to it. Now I'm gonna do the same thing at the other end and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so that's the, the base. Uh, now to do the top. Now these are uh, 24 inches, so they're going to be going all there. Those are 24 inches. Oh. 
These are the 24 inch ones that are going to go across either end. Uh, but we tried putting a framework together, try to get the fit, and it was definitely a hassle. And we ended up taking it apart to make it fit. So I found that if I just mark the ends off to where the, uh, the long pieces are going to go, that gives me a spot to line up on these on the end pieces here. And because I want to leave an inch at the top, just for space-wise, I put a little mark down, an inch down on each of these. Like so. Now, I can take, got some screws. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna take it out of the somewhere. There you go, Mr. Cobb. I don't need that many, but. So oh, now I can bring these over here, get my screws started. Then I take this, where I got that one inch, where I got the line, line this up where I don't know if you can see this. You got that line, line it up along the edge, make it so that the top is showing that that one inch line. Attach this side. Go over here. Make sure the other side's the same way. Is it? Mm -hmm. We do that and do the same thing at the other end. Okay, so now we're going to put the upper rail on. There's two of us, so we could hold it up and do it. But I want to show you how to do it if it's just one person. This makes it a, a lot easier. Take a swivel. Get that in. We're just going to turn it up. You're just going to lay it down like that. And nail it in place. See, now if you're doing it by yourself, these pieces of plywood help hold this in place while you nail either end. Side next. Or the top. 
Okay, so there's the, the basic framework and it's lunchtime. So this only took all together cutting and everything less than an hour at this point. Uh, after lunch, we'll do some more. Okay, so off camera, I added a back, just a piece of scrap wood uh, to the sandbox area, which is what this is going to be. And now we've got to put wire down this, which means this is a uh, just a little over a foot, but the foot will overlap this. I've got two foot uh, wire and from the other one, that I cut in half, here's the this wire. Now when you cut it in half, this is one inch by two inch. It leaves these little ends out. Um, I want to turn this around so that those are sticking up. Let's see how this fits. See, I'll be able to staple on the, these ends down and then along the bottom. And we'll just do that with, with the air stapler. Uh, and then uh, I don't have to cut another, another one and a half. Um, let me do it this way. Spread it out this way. The length should be good. Get it on this end. What I like to do is staple one end. These are a little tricky because they got to balance this, the foot on top of the wire. And now I can just make sure that it's going to be down on the bottom and up the staple and we should be good. So now I just got to go along and staple this all down. that we'll get the whole side done and then we can do the top. So if you use this so it's got the, the little ends it's always a good idea because the stapler is going to bend some of them up. Is bend them back down. Quail have a tendency when they get spooked to jump and you don't want them hanging themselves on these things. So just a real quick thing. All right, so I got the side on, got the wires. Now's a good time to put in these center braces across. This gives a little more stability to the wire on top and the bottom. Um, I got one down there and I'm gonna nail these on and then we're gonna put a, uh, a piece of plywood in here that's gonna divide these between the sides. So, you know, pretty, pretty simple. Just like everything else, I'm just using the, the nailer. And it's nice to put these on now because if you put them on before, you got to notch the wire out and notching the wire out is Not easy. It also leaves a big hole for the, the quail to get through.
can see just how hard it is getting this plywood in here. All right, I'm going to screw that on and then we'll move on to uh, putting the wires on the top. Yeah, it seems like it's running. <laughs> Hook it up here, I can pull it the rest of the way Let's down. Let's get this so it's just hanging off. There we go. Oh, sharp. Yep. <laughs> okay, so now I got to do the the top screen all the way across, and pretty much the same as before. Now, because we when we cut these off, cut these off, it leaves these little ends, and I'll trim those off in a bit. <laughs> now we got a got a wrinkle. Lots of little sharp pieces. Ow. Lots of them. Are you going to survive, Mr. Cobb? A couple different ways to cut this stuff. I'm using some side cutters. Another way. This is pretty tough, so. Another way is to. Uh, which way I'm going to do it. Another way. I'm turning around. Another way, again, is to uh, grinder with a cutoff wheel. Much quicker. Move from. Or not. There's a wrinkle down there. And I'm not going to bore you with watching me staple this all down, but. Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, I didn't show you putting the legs on because I just got so involved and what I forgot to do was cut a hole between the sandbox and the actual run here. What I'm doing is this is a, uh, what is this thing, three and a quarter inch hole saw and I'm doing it way back here in the back to keep it away from the door. There's going to be a door here just like there's a door down here. Uh, that way you open the door and the, and the quail run, they, they got an escape spot. So they aren't trying to come up, escape the way up here. So... I start on that side. And then come to this side to actually go through, it gives a nice smoother, smoother cut. There you go. Now we got a, a hole. I need to go pick up some hinges and we'll put a door here. Uh, 
but uh, the only thing I got to do, I got to build some big doors up here and we will get to that. But the idea here is that we've got three stacked up. This is at six foot. So it's through here, you can reach. This one's a little harder and this one you got to bend down to get. But, um, and this one actually, uh, this was the first one we did. And we did the, uh, uh, we did the doors. I'm taking this off and put big doors in. Now, these, a lot of people use uh, oil catchment pans that they can buy at uh, pretty much any auto place. Uh, I bought these full sheets from uh, Web Restaurant and I think I got a dozen of them for about the same cost as getting something like four or five of the other ones. So the other ones are underneath. There's enough space here and two of these per cage, catch the droppings. Uh, you go to clean it, you just pull them out. Uh, we left an inch and a half of space or almost two inches. This is uh, like three quarters of an inch. So this gives me enough space so if the droppings build up to the point, uh, people have made them a little too close and uh, the droppings get into the cage and they're a pain to pull out. So uh, we'll get to the doors, but there you go. Um, that's a three tier cage. Uh, we're in the next one. Um, I'll make an, I'll be making the, the doors and We'll put a watering system in and that's going to be cool. So, uh, see you next time. I think I need to go take a nap. <laughs> we'll see you down the road. Be safe. All right. Well, now I got the quail cages are all done. We moved them inside the shed. So this is where they're going to stay. Uh, this is mid November. And it's just gonna get colder outside. It's not bad inside, they're protected from the wind. And uh, we've got a few quail in here. So she's got a couple, you can look in here. There's a few hens and a, and a male in there. I, we don't know what they call the males. Roos, cocks, I don't know. Anyway, so. Now that they're in here, we put an automatic, or I put an automatic watering system in. And the way this works, with all this plumbing, is down here you got a five gallon bucket with a submersible pump in it. And this one can do up to 550 gallons an hour, which is way more than we need, but you can dial it back to practically nothing. I got the water being piped up here through that a clear tube and get up here it comes up here into this upper bucket I put a, a nozzle on the inside so it can't possibly flop back out then halfway up the bucket I put this line in and this is just an open return line so that the uh, if you look down here if it ever overflows that's that pipe on that side. And you can see a little bit dribbling out, which just tells me that this bucket is full right to the halfway point, okay? So from there, it comes down here. Now I can turn it completely off. Uh, the trick is dialing this in so that just enough is coming out to keep up with the bucket, or I mean with the pump. And then it goes down into the first quail cage. These little things, there's a little yellow uh, thing in here. They peck at it and it, it's a valve connected in here, fills up with water. From that side, it crosses over to this side, more quail, and then down. I forgot those guys were in there. They are flighty bird, so you sort of should be careful when you're opening it up. Anyway, so what it does, comes down from that one into this cage, crosses over to this cage, goes down into this cage, crosses over to this cage, comes out here, runs across 
second valve. This is the drain valve. If I open it up full, it'll drain this whole system right out, except for the little water that's in the cups and down in. And you can see I got a lot more water coming out of this one than that one. This this is the overflow. So if it if it for whatever reason you know it it tries to overfill the, the upper bucket, it'll just flow down into here. Uh, this one it's the water constantly flowing through at that rate. And the idea is that if it does get cold in here, and we're in Missouri, I'm sorry, Missouri, where I've been told it can get down into negative double digits occasionally. Not like back home in Buffalo and up in Watertown and stuff. But you know, they think it's cold. Anyway, um, this water continuously circulating through here should keep it from freezing. That's the plan. So there you go. Quail cages, automatic watering system. The trays under here are just to catch the droppings. And uh, a lot of people use oil pan uh, under the car, you know, oil pan catchment things. Um, these are restaurant supply. I found out I could get a dozen of these uh, cheaper than I could get six of the oil pans. So, and these will last a long time. All right. So there you go. It's, my first day, first time building quail cages uh, for a homesteading. And there's a ton of videos out there, but uh, that's how we did it. All right, see you down the road. Be safe, my friends.